Good morning, people of Holon and Dala. It's Sunday, March 29th. And as we gather today, we gather to hear God's word and pray all in our own separate houses. We may be not in our church building, but we are still the church together. We are still God's beloved people, gathered in prayer and worship. Our gospel reading this morning comes from the 13th chapter of Mark. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that the summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near, at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. In early February, as I was watching the morning news one day, a great story came on about a woman in the military who had been deployed for a while, who came home and surprised her family at a Harlem Globetrotters game. Her name is DeAndrea Proctor. She's in the Air Force and had been serving in Kuwait for seven months. She'd been away from her boyfriend and her three-year-old child and her other family for over half a year. The day of the Harlem Globetrotters game came and her family was invited to come down on the court in Memphis to meet some of the team. They came down for a photo op with the team, the Harlem Globetrotters, and the team gathered around the boyfriend and the child of DeAndrea. She was able to come from the side of the court and sneak into the picture, except her boyfriend and her three-year-old daughter never noticed. Pictures were taken with the team and with DeAndrea in the corner of the picture, and then the staff showed the pictures on the camera to the family. The three-year-old looked at the picture and became a little baffled. She responded, Mommy? Mommy? But she couldn't quite understand what had happened and how her mom, who was supposed to be in Kuwait, was in this picture. After a little bit, all the other Globetrotters stepped away from being in their group around the family, and the daughter and boyfriend saw DeAndrea standing there, reunited with cheers all around them as the family came together again after such a long time. The three-year-old girl couldn't contain her excitement and she jumped into her mother's arms. A little bit later, the boyfriend embraced them both as DeAndrea struggled to hold back her tears. The amazing surprise return of this mother from her deployment, bringing joy to her family, was a powerful video to watch. But as I read our gospel this morning, I was reminded of the surprise reunion. Because Jesus is talking about his own return to our world at a time that you and I will neither know or expect. Just like DeAndrea surprised her family, Jesus' return will be a surprise. It will be a reunion that he urges us to stay awake for. Part of our reading this morning that you just heard is a difficult reading to hear from our Gospels because Jesus starts to talk about things that may happen at the end of time, darkness and suffering and pain. And even now in our world, there have been some people wondering is this the end time that Jesus talks about? But I want to focus us on a different piece of our reading that reminds us that we don't know the time and that Jesus promises to come back to us 
and that I believe that that reunion when Jesus comes back to all of us will be like the joyful surprise reunion that DeAndrea had with her family at that Harlem Globetrotters game. We as Christians do believe that Jesus will come again in glory. It's something we profess every Sunday when we say the Apostles' Creed. We profess that he will come again to judge the living and the dead. Christians throughout time have wondered what Jesus' return will be like, and we don't have concrete answers for that. But in our reading today, Jesus tells us, no one knows the exact time or the exact place or the hour when Jesus will return, not the angels in heaven, not Jesus himself, only the Father. Just like DeAndrea's surprise return to her family, Jesus' return will be at a time none of us can predict or expect. But we know we long for his coming among us. To help us understand what Jesus is saying today, he tells us a parable about this man who is going on a journey. He leaves home, he puts his servants in charge of all the many tasks at home while he is gone. Each servant is given his own task to do. You can only imagine some of the servants are tasked with caring for the animals, some with paying the bills, some with cooking, some with cleaning. And then we hear there's a doorkeeper. The doorkeeper is meant to be on watch. Jesus says, therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come back, in the evening, at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Jesus is speaking to us and his disciples, reminding us like, that we are like those servants, like that doorkeeper who, is, who are left to tend the house when Jesus is away. We as the church live in this time between Jesus' earthly life and Jesus coming again, and he urges us to be awake for signs of his presence, for signs of his coming, he also urges us to do the work he's left us to do, the work of caring for our neighbor, the work of praying for our world, the work of reaching out in his name. Jesus has left us, his servants, with work to do between his earthly life and his coming again, and he urges us to keep awake. So in these weeks before Easter, where are you noticing signs of Jesus's presence? What signs are you seeing of how he's present with you? After you watch this video, take some time with your family to talk about those times when you see Jesus' love, Jesus' presence, signs of hope and new life, even in this strange world that we are currently experiencing. And then Jesus reminds us that we have work to do until he comes again, work we do in his name, work we do to keep our world ready and waiting for him. What can you do this week to be like one of those servants, to reach out to our world in Jesus' name? Now, we all may be staying at home as much as possible, but there are ways we can reach our world in Jesus' name. We can reach out in love, we can show some patience, we can give an act of kindness, and then we are like those servants in our parable. As Jesus speaks with his disciples in today's reading, he's helping them look forward to a time when they can be with him again, when he has come again. He's speaking of a reunion in which he comes to his people in love and grace and brings healing and joy. We long to see Jesus face to face. Also in this time, we may long to see some of our family members again face to face. We may long to be back in our church buildings, in a space we know and love. We may long to see our church members again too. Jesus promises the time is coming for reunions, and we know that when those reunions happen, with Jesus, with our family, with our church family, they will be joyful and filled with surprises and new life. Amen. Now we're going to have the prayers of the church in a way that each of you can participate at home. I will start each prayer with, we pray for our world, and then in your own mind and heart or out loud with your family, you can name something in our world that you would want to pray for. 
And then I'll end each prayer like we do on Sunday with Lord in your mercy. And you can all say, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, there are so many things to pray for in these days. We pray for our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, sometimes it is difficult to keep our faith strong in you. We may be filled with questions. We may be filled with worries. We pray for all people of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, we pray for all those who are working in jobs to care for others. We pray for those in the medical field, those in law enforcement in our military. We pray for our teachers. We pray for all those reaching out to their neighbor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, we pray this day for the youth and children of our communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Well, we do not know exactly when we'll be worshiping next together in our church buildings, but we continue to worship here together through video, through technology, through God's word and prayer. Continue to reach out to one another, continue to share stories of where you see God present, and know that I am thinking about you and praying for you. If you need to reach out, simply call the parsonage. We'll be here and we can talk, we can think about ways to serve God together. Until our next video, take care, be safe, stay home.